Hi, my name is Rachel White, and I'm a developer advocate here at Datadog. Welcome to the second video in our series that's exploring all aspects of front-end observability and monitoring. Today's video is going to be a high-level overview of the features available to you out of the box when you integrate Datadog Synthetics into your application. Stay tuned for future videos, which will be deeper dives into performance monitoring, advanced configuration and custom actions, error tracking, and more. Feel free to move through the chapters that the video timeline is broken down into if you're curious about a specific feature, and check out the description for links to documentation, continuing education on this topic on the Datadog Learning Center, and other helpful resources. So let's start off by learning, what is synthetics? Synthetic testing, also known as synthetic monitoring or proactive monitoring, is a way to identify performance issues with key user journeys by simulating real user traffic. A reliable user experience is essential to the value of the products and services your application provides. You can leverage synthetic testing to proactively monitor the availability of your services, the response time of your applications, and the functionality of customer transactions. Traditional approaches to synthetic testing have quite a few pain points. Test creation requires programming knowledge, and test scripts take a long time to create. It creates a high barrier to entry for team members who are unfamiliar with the process. Test coverage is difficult to maintain. You have to configure your testing suites for browser compatibility, multiple screens, geolocations, and stay on top of latest UI changes. Siloed approaches to monitoring and testing solutions don't provide visibility necessary to troubleshoot and resolve issues. And pivoting between all the tools needed increases time spent resolving issues, can result in more downtime, and can lead to increased business costs. Datadog Synthetic Monitoring is a proactive monitoring solution that enables you to create code-free API and browser tests to automatically simulate user flows and requests to your applications, key endpoints, and network layers. Now, let's take a look at some of those capabilities. API tests help you proactively monitor your most important services at various network layers, including HTTP, SSL, DNS, WebSocket, TCP, UDP, ICMP, and gRPC. API tests are single requests executed against your services. If you want to monitor more complex transactions, you'll need to chain your requests with multi-step API tests. If you'd like to find out specific details about each of these, please follow the link in the description to documentation covering each subtype in depth. To show you how to set up synthetic testing, we'll be using a fictitious but actually functioning e-commerce website called Shopist. Let's walk through setting up an API test now. The first step in creating your API test is choosing which network layer you're going to be making a request against. We're gonna choose HTTP and create a test that will allow for us to make sure our web application is up and running. HTTP tests allow you to send HTTP requests to your application's API endpoints to verify responses and define conditions, such as overall response time, expected status code, header, or body content. Now we need to define our request method, and available methods are get, post, patch, put, head, delete, and options. HTTP and HTTPS requests URLs are supported. I'm gonna choose get and type in the URL to my application. We're going to wanna to name our test something that at a glance gives us enough information to understand the purpose of the test. So I'm going to name it uptime test on Shopist. Then we're going to choose our environment tags, a team if applicable, and any other tags that you want associated with your test. If I go ahead and hit send, you will see a response preview of the request which will help us build out the rest of our test. If you're interested in advanced options for your request, please visit our documentation linked in the description below. Now let's walk through defining an assertion. 
Assertions define what an expected test result is. After you click test URL, basic assertions on response time, status code, and header content type are added based on the response that was obtained. You must define at least one assertion for your test to monitor. You can create up to 20 assertions per API test by clicking New Assertion. Since we are checking for general uptime, we aren't going to worry about changing the response time. We want to check that the status code is 200 for a successful response and that our header content type is text slash HTML. Now we're going to select the locations to run our HTTP test from. HTTP tests can run from both managed and private locations, depending on your preference for running the test from outside or inside your network. Datadog's out-of-the-box managed locations allow you to test public-facing websites and endpoints from regions where your customers are located. I'm going to choose a mix of cloud provider options in the Americas region. Then you're going to define your retry conditions. You can customize the retry interval to suit your needs. Now we're going to define our scheduling and alerting conditions. There's a set of basic intervals and advanced options. Now we're going to configure the monitor for this test. You'll want to, to select who you want to alert by user by typing at and the team member's name and then the message that you want to send. There are messaging templates available that you can see by clicking on the top right of the window, and you can also preview the message. And lastly, you can set permissions. By default, only users with a Datadog admin and Datadog standard roles can create, edit, and delete synthetic HTTP tests. To get create, edit, and delete access to synthetic HTTP tests, Upgrade your user to one of those two default roles. Once you hit save, your test will begin running based off the schedule that you defined, and you'll be able to start exploring your results. Before we take a look at our test runs, though, let's set up another test. This time, we're going to be setting up a browser test. Browser tests allow you to monitor key application workflows, such as creating a new account or adding items to cart. Datadog's GUI-based web recorder enables every member of your team to create code-free tests that proactively catch issues in any user journey. Browser tests can only be recorded from Chrome, and you're going to need to download the Chrome extension Datadog Record Test. For a link to the extension, please visit the link in the description below. Let's set up our browser test now. I'm going to pick the same starting URL for our e-commerce site, Shopist. I'm going to give my test a recognizable name, and for this, we are going to test our checkout flow for users on large screens. So I'll make it desktop checkout flow. Next, we're going to set our environment, team, and additional tags, and also what browser and devices you'll be using. Since we're going to be running tests checking for desktop checkout flow, I'll choose Laptop Large uh, across Chrome, Edge, and Firefox. Just like our API tests, we can select from managed and private locations. Define your retry conditions to something that suits your needs, and then define your scheduling and alert conditions. I'll just keep the basic test runs every five minutes option and the standard alert trigger. Then you configure your monitoring messaging, set permissions to your liking, and save and edit recording to start recording and building your browser test. This view is our test recorder, and you can see it automatically shows us a view of the starting URL we defined in our test setup on the right-hand side. And it shows us the test scenario steps on the left. I'm going to click Record to begin recording. You can switch tabs in a browser test recording in order to perform an action on your application, such as clicking on a link that opens another tab, and add another test step. Your browser test must interact with the page first through a click before it can perform an assertion. By recording all of the test steps, the browser test can switch tabs automatically at test execution. 
As you click through your application for the user journey that you're wanting to monitor, the actions that you perform are automatically recorded and used to create steps in the browser test scenario on the left. In addition to the automatically recorded steps, you can use also the steps in the upper left-hand corner to enrich your scenario. Datadog recommends ending your browser test with an assertion to confirm the journey executed by the browser test resulted in the expected state. So let's do that now. I'm going to add an assertion and choose test and elements content. Now I'm going to click on the element that we want to choose on the right. And if I hover over the recorder, I get a bounding box corresponding to the page element. Once I click on it, it creates the step name and target element and value check for me. Now let's save the recording and run our test to view our results. Test runs appear in test details page after a synthetic test executes. Sample results correlate to the latest passed and failed test executions over a time interval and in a specific number of locations and devices. And they include a com components such as screenshots, page performance data, errors, resources, and backend traces to help you troubleshoot your test failure. In the history section, you can see three graphs. The global uptime graph displays the total uptime of all test locations in a given time interval. The global uptime takes into consideration the alert conditions configured for a test. The time to interactive by location and device graph displays the amount of time until a page can be interacted with in seconds. The test duration by location and device graph displays the amount of time in minutes um, each location and device takes to complete in a given time interval. Now that we've set up an API test and a browser test, let's take a look at the out-of-the-box dashboards that you get by integrating synthetics into your application. When you create a synthetics test, Datadog collects data and generates dashboards about your stack, browser applications, overall test performance, private locations, and events. The API test performance dashboard shows you API test types. So you can view your network level's average response time, latency, or lookup time, uh, along with transaction timings and response time by location by test type. Events, so you can view events triggered for all of your API tests and filter for the specific tests using the template variables at the top of the dashboard. The browser test performance dashboard shows you Synthetic Browser Test Analysis, which gives a breakdown of success rate by browser type, a list of browser test alerts, and average test duration by browser type and location. Synthetic Test Web Performance. If you have Datadog RUM enabled, you can use the RUM integration to examine core web vitals and a list of third-party provider test resources and events. So you can explore outstanding events from your synthetic test alerts. The Synthetic Monitoring and Continuous Testing Summary Dashboard shows you Synthetic Monitoring and Testing Usage, which lets you view a breakdown of your synthetic test usage by environment, team, and test type. Test Automation, which lets you view synthetic test runs in your CI-CD pipelines by type and team. And Private Locations, which lets you view the number of synthetic workers by private location, the average concurrency, and average number of pulled tests. And that's all for today. And we barely touched the surface on all of the things that you can do with synthetics. Stay tuned for more videos and deeper dives into front-end observability and monitoring. And check out the description below for helpful links to all of the topics that we covered today. Thanks.